Hey everyone, welcome to the Journey Home Podcast, and this week we are continuing our conversation on discipleship. Um, this week I wanted to share on the topic of gifting and character. Um, obviously those are two topics that we could talk about, um, you know, individually, and we there's a lot that we can say, uh, but I wanted to talk to, about them together, and I think you'll see why in a moment, um, but I think ideally these are both um areas that we want to pursue at the same time and and you know pursue each one well um you know because for our own discipleship or for um those who we are discipling like it's really important that you discover um your spiritual gifts and and that you learn how to use them for the glory of god you know he gave us each of us different gifts and um for a reason um to be a blessing to to others um but at the very same time, we need to be pursuing um, godly character. I shared in an earlier episode that I believe, biblically speaking, you know, the, the ultimate aim of discipleship is for us to become like Jesus, to be transformed into his likeness, for, for Christ to be formed in us. And I think a huge um, part of that is mm -hmm. having his character, his nature formed in us. And so... Um, Again, these are both very, very, very important. And I even, you know, toyed with the idea of naming this episode gifting versus character, but I didn't want to pit them against each other because I don't think it's meant to be that way. Um, but that being said, I think we we as human beings have a tendency uh, to pursue one at the neglect of the other. And I, again, I don't think it's meant to be that way, but I just think it ends up happening for a number of reasons. Um, but it's interesting because, you know, I, and I was trying to like really search and search through the scriptures and, and think of an example. Um, and I was trying to think, is there an example where, um, you know, there is a church or, you know, just even a person who is, uh, warned or rebuked for, you know, pursuing uh, godly character too much and at the neglect of uh, pursuing their gifts or, you know, uh, doing the works of the kingdom, right? And I couldn't think of one personally. I'm curious if any of you know of an example. If you do, let me know, because I'm actually really curious um, to see if there is an example. But I do see examples where we are warned, um, you know, maybe maybe not pursuing uh, gifting over character, but we are definitely warned that it is possible um, to be operating in powerful gifts and at the same time lacking uh, the character that God calls us to. So just to give you a few examples, you know, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, what we know is the Sermon on the Mount, um, Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 21, he says this, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. And so that's an incredibly sobering warning. Um, and the crazy thing about that is, you know, there's these people are going to say, Lord, we actually perform miracles. We cast out demons. We prophesied in your name. Like many of us would consider that pretty successful. But Jesus says, you know, away from me, you evildoers. And so, and I know some preach um, because uh, I think other translations, you know, what he'll say, I never knew you. And so, um, you know, I, I know that this often gets taught as, um, you know, as a as a reminder or, or a, a warning that we need to have relationship above everything. And I agree with that. And I think that is a right way to teach it. Um, but I think also, you know, if we look back just a few verses right before he makes these uh, statements, he's talking about 
false prophets and the way he says we'll recognize false prophets is by the fruit of their lives. Now, fruit in some scriptures can be used to talk about, you know, again, good works or, you know, ministry works or, or you know, using our gifts. It, it, there is a, f a fruit that comes from that for sure. Um, but I don't think that's what, I think it's pretty clear that's not what Jesus is talking about here because, if, if he was talking about that kind of fruit, it seems like they have that. But the other fruit that the Bible does talk about is the fruit of righteousness and the fruit of the Spirit, which is, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, um, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, right? And, and uh, you know, that's not maybe all that godly character is, but it's— but. I always start there for sure when I think of godly character, those, you know, those fruit of the spirit. And then, you know, probably add a few more things to the list from other parts of the Bible. But um, but that is also the fruit that God is looking for from our lives. And so I believe as Jesus is, you know, sadly tragically saying to these people you know away from me you evildoers um, again it's not because they didn't pursue the gifts and do those works but it's because they didn't um, reflect and cultivate the fruit of the spirit which i believe is the character of god and then paul you know in you know very well-known passage first corinthians 13 uh, shares kind of a similar idea um, he says if i speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love i am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal if i have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if i have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love i am nothing if i give all i possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that i may boast but do not have love I gain nothing. And so, again, I don't think Jesus or Paul is saying, forget, you know, forget about the gifts, forget about, you know, uh, those kind of works. I don't think either of them would say that. I think we are to pursue that for sure, but we cannot pursue it at the cost of pursuing love or pursuing godly character. And, and Paul actually, in the very next sentence, uh, or next chapter says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. So he's not throwing it away, but he's saying, as you're desiring these gifts, as you're pursuing that, you have to pursue love and pursue. And, and to me, love is the ultimate uh, characteristic of godly character. If, if you had to boil it down to one. Now, again, I think there's there are multiple um you know, characteristics of a godly person. And that would um, describe Jesus, who are we, who we are aiming to be like. Uh, but if you had to boil it down to one, um, I, I would say it's love. And I think there are many scriptures that uh, would support that idea. You know, Paul says, you know, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And, you know, Jesus summarizes, um, the law, he says, in two commandments, love God, love your neighbor. Like love is because it, it really contains all the other ones. If we have a truly biblical understanding of love, um, you know, and, and that means way more than just being like a nice person and doing some nice things. You know, the kind of love that God um, demonstrates for us goes way beyond that. It's a love that loves his enemies it's a love you know that endures and suffers long you know and so it's way beyond what a lot of people would think love is uh, if that makes sense so um so yeah again it's not about throwing the gifts away and you know we need to pursue those but never never at the expense of love and you know again the biblical writers, I don't think they necessarily pit them against each other. Like if you had to choose one, choose love, don't choose the gifts. I don't think they would say that. Um, but there definitely is a priority. There is an emphasis on on love, on character. Um, you know, and again, I'm, I'm sure that it's possible um, to pursue love 
and at the and then neglect pursuing gifts and so you know maybe there are churches out there that need to you know be you know encouraged in their pursuit of love but maybe pushed or rebuked even you know at, that the fact that they're neglecting to pursue um some of the other works of the kingdom right it's possible but again my point is i don't i can't think of an example um in the scripture at least of someone getting corrected for that or rebuked for that or warned against that um and this is just my opinion i i wonder or my speculation but i wonder if that's because you know we do have a tendency as human beings you know to pursue those kind of things naturally right like like we want to be productive we want to do stuff for god like that is a normal thing and, and it is a good thing now obviously we have to um you know, there's things, we, there's pitfalls we have to watch out for. But in and of itself, that is a, I believe, a God-given desire. But why I think character is so important is that that will corrupt the very works that we're trying to do in the name of God for his glory, right? Like we can, you know, pursue these things with the wrong motivation. We can do it and say it's for the glory of God, but really it's for our own glory, right? And so that's why I think the character has to go hand in hand and even be emphasized, you know, possibly a little bit more um, than the than the gifts and the and the the works. Right. And I think, again, as this is just, again, my speculation, but I, as human beings, I think it is easier for us to neglect the character side than the gifting side. Right. Like we it's easier for us to want to excuse ourselves or take shortcuts on the character side. Um, I remember, you know, some years ago, you know, I've had the privilege to work in a lot of different ministry contexts. I remember just sitting around with uh, a few of my friends who were, and we're all in ministry. Um, and I don't even remember how we got on this topic, but we just started talking about, you know, like, they're like, I know you don't have to choose, but if, you know, if you, if you had to choose uh, between someone in your ministry who is like insanely gifted, but had very poor character, just think about it, like super gifted. So maybe they're gifted in evangelism. They're winning people to the Lord like crazy, you know, like all these new people are coming to the faith, you know, that's amazing, right? But or maybe they're super prophetic or, you know, or any number of gifts um, that the Lord gives, right? Like they're super gifted, but they have really low character. Okay. Would you rather have that person in your church or would you rather have um, someone who is so godly, you know, godly character, loving, kind, patient, all, all these, you know, fruit of the spirit like crazy but they're not like super gifted. And, you know, it was kind of like just a half serious conversation, you know, so I don't want to put too much stock into it, but it was just interesting to me how like all of us, we had to like kind of pause for a moment, you know, and, um, you know, and I think even some in the conversation said, yeah, I'd rather have the more gifted guy, honestly, <laughs> like, you know, like I'll just, you know, try to clean up their messes, but, <laughs> you know, um, but I don't know. It, and and again, in an ideal world, we don't have to make that choice, right? Like our disciples are bearing fruit in terms of the character, the fruit of the spirit, and they're also bearing fruit uh, in terms of their gifts and their, you know, the works of the kingdom, right? Um, but, you know, sadly, I think we can look at at least recent church history, if not, you know, all of church history and find examples of, you know, gifted people, um, but, but because of their gifts, their lack of character was excused, right? Like, so we just somehow talked ourselves into like, hey, you know what, they'll, they'll grow in it eventually, right? Or, and, and we didn't insist on them growing in character and pursuing character at the same time, or even with greater urgency than they were pursuing the gift. And sadly, at times that has led to tragic consequences, right? Um, and I say all this to say, you know, again, both of these things are really important. Um, 
But again, as I'm sharing my thoughts on discipleship and some of the things that I've observed, I really want to urge us, you know, all of us, because we are, you know, uh, we are aiming, we are disciples of Jesus, or hopefully soon we will um, decide to become disciples of Jesus. Um, and we're all called to make disciples. And I want to urge us to not neglect um, character, character formation, you know. Um, and that's, again, that's more than um, just trying to be a better person, right? Like it's way more than that. It's deeper than that. Um, I'll, maybe I'll share thoughts on that in a future episode. But, um, but we have to insist that our disciples pursue growing in the fruit of the Spirit, cultivating the fruit of the Spirit, not perfection, you know, because we're going to stumble. And it is a painful process, which is probably why we prefer to avoid it if we can, right? Um, you know, we don't like being challenged in our character or, or you know, um, submitting ourselves to the process by which God produces godly character in us, right? Like none of us like that. It's not comfortable, uh, but we have, we can't run away from it. We have to talk about it. We have to point the way forward. We have to pursue it ourselves um, and insist on it in those that we are discipling. And so, um, yeah, so anyway, that's the main reason I share all of these thoughts today is because I really hope that as we move forward into the future as the people of God, as the body of Christ, I hope that the fruit of the Spirit is um, a non-negotiable, honestly. I really hope that we insist on this in our leaders, in our selves, and in our disciples. And so um, thank you guys for listening, and uh, I hope this has provoked some thoughts in you, and I hope that's been helpful. Um, we'll see you next time.